Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. Hello, and in today's video, we are going to talk about the morphology of maxillary permanent central incisors. The maxillary central incisors are two in number. They are the most prominent teeth in the oral cavity. They erupt at the age of 6 to 7 years and their root is completed at about the age of 10. In a healthy individual, maxillary centrals are the second teeth to erupt in the oral cavity after eruption of the mandibular centrals. The central incisors are centered in the maxilla, one on either side of the midline. The central incisors functions in mastication. They also play an important role in the aesthetics and phonetics functions. Four features of incisors which helps us in differentiating the crowns of incisors from the crowns of other permanent teeth includes their position and angulation of marginal ridges, their incisal edge, mamelons and cingulum. The marginal ridges of a central incisor are the mesial and distal elevations of the lingual surface of the tooth and are parallel to the long axis of the tooth. However, marginal ridges on posterior teeth are present on their occlusal surfaces. Mamelons are rounded extensions of enamel on the incisal ridge of recently erupted incisors and most often are three in number. However, they are irregular in shape, number and prominence. Mamelons normally wear away soon after the incisors come into active occlusion causing the conversion of the incisal ridge into an incisal edge. We must understand a difference between an incisal ridge and an incisal edge. The incisal ridge is that portion of the crown which makes up the complete incisal portion. When an incisor is newly erupted, the incisal portion is rounded and it merges with the mesioincisal and with the distoincisal line angles and the labial and lingual surfaces of a tooth. The incisal ridge soon after a tooth comes in occlusion, as said before, it fades away as a result of tooth wear and what left behind is the incisal edge. An edge is defined as any angle formed by the merging of two flat surfaces. The incisal edge is a flattened edge or surface and it is not formed until occlusal wear has created a flat edge. Lingual fossa and cingulum are found on the lingual surface of incisors. A lingual fossa is the concavity present on the incisal half of the lingual surface. Cingulum is the convexity present on the cervical third on the lingual surfaces of incisors. Let's study the morphology of central incisors from the labial, lingual, distal and mesial aspects respectively. From the labial surface, the maxillary central incisors are trapezoidal in shape. The crown of the average central incisor will be 10 to 11 mm in length and 8 to 9 mm in width at the incisal end. The incisor cervical dimension of a central incisor is greater than its mesiodistal dimension. The labial surface is convex in both directions. The mesial outline of the crown from the labial view is slightly convex and possess an almost straight mesioincisal angle. However, the distal outline is more convex than the mesial outline with a rounded distoincisal angle. Two shallow depressions which extend from the incisal edge towards the gingiva fades away at the middle third of the crown. They are termed as mesiolabial and distolabial developmental depressions and they present the division of the three labial lobes. Sometimes the tooth at its cervical third might have some faint and curved lines, which are roughly parallel to the cemento enamel junction and are called imbrication lines. The cervical outline is semicircular in shape. The root is conical with a blunt apex. 
Unlike the smooth labial surface, the lingual surface of the crown is irregular in shape and possesses convexities and a concavity. The concavity possesses a scooped out appearance at the middle and incisal third. This concavity is termed lingual fossa of the tooth. The concavity is bordered mesially and distally through mesial and distal marginal ridges. The cervical one-third of the crown is convex and this convexity is termed cingulum. The cingulum is confluent with the mesial and distal marginal ridges. If a cross-section of the central incisor is taken at its root and observed, it looks much like a triangle with rounded angles. The sides of the triangle are formed by the labial, distal and mesial surfaces of the root. The lingual surface of the root is formed by the union of the mesial and distal surfaces. What we can observe here is that the root narrows or converges at the lingual aspect of a central incisor. From the mesial aspect, the crown of the maxillary central incisor is triangular or wedge-shaped, with the base of the triangle at the cervix and the apex at the incisal edge. The cervical line at the mesial aspect is curved towards the incisal edge, having the highest depth of curvature of all teeth in the oral cavity. The greatest measurement of the crown labiolingually from the mesial aspect is at the crest of curvature, immediately coronal to the cervical line. The crest of curvature is the highest point of the labial and lingual curves of the crown. Below the crest of curvature, the outline of the crown is convex labially, while it's convex and then concave lingually. Distally, the crown is thicker at the incisal end as compared to the mesial surface. The curvature of the cervical outline is much less in extent compared to the curvature of cervical outline at the mesial surface. The incisal outline may exhibit mamelons. Without mamelons, the outline is generally straight and almost perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth. The bulk of the crown at the labial aspect is more than the lingual aspect. I hope this video helps. Please do like, subscribe, share and comment if you think this video was really helpful. Thank you for watching.